Hello, welcome to the Orthodox Talk channel. How to find a spiritual father? This is not an easy question, by the way. Many Orthodox Christians nowadays are looking for someone who would guide them throughout their lives, who would help them to make the proper decisions, to take the right sides when they have to make their own mind. However, is it that easy nowadays to find a spiritual father, a true leader, a true guide who would lead a person toward Christ and toward salvation? We will talk about it in this video. But first, we need to define who can be called a spiritual father. If you talk to the Orthodox Christians about this, you will find that we have quite different understanding of this term spiritual father. And the differences come from the different need in our lives, what we need a spiritual father for. We have different inquiries. Most of us, of course, want spiritual guidance, but not all of us see this guidance as a spiritual walk toward Christ. You will be surprised, but a number of people want their spiritual father to be no less than a prophet, who would tell them things ahead of time, who would foretell them what is going to happen to them in their future. And these cases are not rare. Others want their spiritual father to be a saint, a saint who would share the grace of God with them. And still others want a spiritual father to be someone ready to listen to them when they want to talk. But the original meaning of the spiritual father is quite different from all of these perceptions. Just like our parents teach us to stand firm in our early ages and walk, our spiritual father shows us how to stand firm on the path toward Jesus Christ, toward salvation. He is the one that points toward Christ, but he himself stays in the shadow, just like John the Baptist. He doesn't want to show off. He wants to show Christ. Just like our parents teach us to overcome obstacles in our lives, our spiritual father teaches us to overcome our inner obstacles, the obstacles that we come across while trying to follow Christ. I'm talking about sins, sinful desires, temptations. He is the one who knows how to do it because he had done it or is doing it at the, at the same time. He is overcoming his own obstacles. A spiritual father would never boast about his own achievements, spiritual achievements. Just like our parents care for our future and plan things ahead, our spiritual father cares for our eternal future. And he is ready to do whatever it takes to take us away from the wrong path and put us on the path towards salvation. Well, so far it sounds easy, right? However, there is a problem here. Because not so many so-called spiritual fathers know what might be good specifically for you. But how so, you might ask? Aren't they all ordained? Are, are, aren't they all the men of God? No one becomes a spiritual father just by being ordained as a priest. I'll tell you even more. Not all priests are spiritual fathers or can be spiritual fathers. Yes, I know. You've probably heard many times by now how people call their priests their spiritual fathers just because they have a priest in their parish. I am a priest myself and I've heard this expression many times. However, I try to point people towards the, the real meaning of spiritual father. Because by calling me a spiritual father, they give me a lot of credit ahead of time. And we tend sometimes to exaggerate things a little bit. Or maybe we have this desire to have someone like, to have a spiritual father close to us. But it is not easy to find a real spiritual father. And it's been like that for centuries now. If you read the history of the church, you will find that this problem of, of finding a real spiritual father or the elders who, who could lead us towards Christ, who could show us on their own example how spiritually advanced we can become, this problem um, 
has been around from at least the 4th century. As soon as the church became free to preach, as soon as the church uh, became free to express their beliefs, to practice their Christian faith, this problem emerged. I want to draw your attention to St. Macarius the Great. You all know him, probably. He's a saint of the 4th century, and he wrote already that there might be some guides, spiritual guides, so to speak. They might be partakers of divine grace. However, due to the lack of their experience, they are in their childhood. St. Macarius says that this state of childhood in their spiritual development, although they are already the partakers of divine grace, this state is a very unsatisfactory state. A true ascetic is the one who has lots of experience already himself or herself. And he goes on and says that in monasteries at that time, at the time of St. Macarius the Great, uh, that kind of elders had a very special phrase attached to them, holy but not skillful. And he even says that people need to be cautious while consulting with them. So as you see, even the fourth century had its problems because there were some divinely inspired men However, not all of them had this experience that would help them to lead people toward Christ. Saint Cassian, the Roman, uh, the saint of the 5th century, he says the same thing. It is good to open one's thoughts uh, to fathers, but only to those who can reason. And the well-known saint of the 6th century, Saint John the Ladder, he writes even that uh, not only we have to be cautious and find someone who can reason and ask him questions about our spiritual life, about spiritual advancements, but as he says, we need to test and even tempt that person whom we want to be our spiritual father. Test and even tempt to see how that person behaves under different circumstances. And why do we need to do that? Because we might get someone who is full of his own sinful passions and we want him to lead us toward Christ. St. John of the Letter tells us that such a person might take us to the abyss. St. Simeon, the new theologian, and he is the saint of the 10th century, he writes that it is better for us just start praying about finding a real spiritual father. But meanwhile, we need to read the Holy Scripture, we need to study the Divine Scripture by ourselves, we need to read and study the writings of the Holy Fathers, so that we can compare the advice of our potential spiritual father with the sayings of the Holy Fathers and with the Bible, with the writings of, of the Holy Scripture. So he he's basically saying the same thing, that we need to test a person who is to become our spiritual father. And St. Ignatius Branchaninov, uh, that's 19th century already, but he, he, he was the one who wrote that there was no spiritual fathers at all at his time. And he says that we need to do, well, he basically says the same thing as St. Simeon, the new theologian, that we need to reason, we need to study Holy Scripture, we need to study Holy Fathers, because there is no spiritual fathers left. And what we do now in our churches, he says, we have to receive it as an advice, not as a road map, but as an advice for someone whom we think is spiritual father. And we need to decide it by ourselves whether we want to follow that advice or not. St. Ignatius says that every spiritual father needs to guide the soul or lead the soul toward Christ. And he also warns us not to idolize our spiritual father as well, because there are many examples when people, when parishioners, idolize someone, and we need to flee from that kind of spiritual fathers. So as you can see, the more years we add to our calendar, the less holy fathers or the less spiritual fathers we have. So we need to be attentive. And, and how to answer now to the question, how to find a spiritual father? Where to look for him? My own suggestion would be, my own advice would be, 
that you can call a spiritual father someone who, who receives your confession, of course. Someone who knows you, someone who knows how to, what to apply to your spiritual wound in order for you to heal it. Another advice is from the Holy Fathers, and uh, the advice is to test the person who you want to call a spiritual father. He has to be an experienced person, not just a novice. He needs to care for his own soul and for your soul as well. And call your father confessor a spiritual father only when you're sure that he is the one who will lead you to Christ, who will show you the way, who himself went through a lot already, but still accept his words as an advice and make the decision yourself. This will be in accordance with the Holy Father's so, to sum up, we read the Holy Bible, we read the Holy Scriptures, we read the writings of the Holy Fathers, we test a priest or a monk who, who we think is good for us to be a spiritual father, we compare his advices to the advices of the saints, of the fathers of the Church, and we weigh his advice on the scales of the Holy Scriptures. It could be your parish priest. It could be someone in the monastery. It could be someone who is close to you. It, who, it could be someone who is far from you. But that someone needs to be caring for your soul. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like it, give it a thumb up. Share it with your friends. I hope that you can make a comment or two down in the comment area or ask questions. I'll try my best to answer the questions. And I hope that you still have time to watch a video or two on this channel. God bless us all. Have a nice day.